Linton, first of all, congratulations. Um, overall, how would you assess your performance? Have you, are you happy with what you did out there? I'm happy that I was able to out grapple a wrestler, considering I'm from the UK and I've had no wrestling background, you know, so the UK wrestling is on point, should I say. I'll give myself a good seven. I'm not, I'm not 100% happy because obviously it's the, the whole performance, so I've still got some stuff to work on, but obviously super happy with the performance, you know, well, super happy with the outcome, with the victory, should I say, so... Yeah, and speaking on, on the wrestling, we had uh, spoken to uh, Tyrell raft, right after your uh, scrum uh, on Wednesday, and he had told us that he was actually your wrestling coach for a little bit when he worked at um, Hard Knocks at the time, um, or, or Sanford. I don't know if it was no, well, Hard Knocks or Sanford at so the time. So he, he was at Hard Knocks before me, okay. so he never coached me wrestling. Okay. Um, not when I was there anyway, but what happened, I was getting ready to fight Phil Davis, I needed a wrestler, so I did call him in to help me, and he was there for two weeks, but we already worked together for like about a week, gotcha. and pretty much what that was, I was on my back, he was on top, told me down, if I escaped, we'll just go back to that position, and that's, that's pretty much all we did, so he wasn't actually my wrestling coach, gotcha, yep. you know, he came to help me, so that's exactly what happened, so we never, I never actually got to really see what he had to bring. And I was definitely impressed with his striking because he ended up cutting me and I couldn't find my my distance and my time with the striking. So I sort of went to my wrestling and, you know, we all saw what happened. I was able to reverse him and get on top and land some damage and get the win. Now, did you plan on wrestling him? Because, you know, he's known for his wrestling. So that's probably, you know, not something everybody thinks of. But I think a lot of people were, were surprised. Um, not that they doubt any on your yeah. skills, but, you know, his background, that you were able to out-wrestle him and you were winning most of those exchanges. Yeah, well, I have a, an amazing wrestling coach, um, Greg Jackson. Uh, Greg Jones. <laughs> Greg Jones. Greg Jackson also. I know, coach. right? Um, Greg Jones. So whenever I started doing mixed martial arts, I ended up doing jujitsu. Um, I used to watch WWE, and um, when I first went to actually train, I was doing wrestling moves like that. And then my coach um, at the time, Danny Batten, obviously made me more technical. And then came here, obviously, and worked with Greg Jones. And I sort of felt like I just put it, put it all together. And it's grappling more than wrestling or, or jiu-jitsu. I just put it together. And the sessions we do with, with Kami Bazan as well, and Greg Jones, we we just do a different type. We do a lot of shark tanks. Um, you see there right now, Carl Noblet. He's been my training partner for a solid year. You know, um, he helped me for the Greg Jones. Um, Greg Jones. Why am I getting my words mixed <laughs> up? Tyrone, Fortune, and yeah, getting me super ready. Um, so yeah, to out grapple Tyrell, yeah, it was definitely a big feather in my cap. And hopefully, you know, a lot of people um, have took notice. You know. Certainly. Uh, lastly, uh, you told us leading up to the fight that you f thought that this was sort of a title eliminator. You know, yes. you're on a nice streak. If you picked up a, a victory here, you were next in line. Do you f still feel that way following the fight? Um, where do you go next? I, I do. I do. I would like another fight, but at the end of the day, you know, I always feel like we're our own worst enemies. We all want to, you know, have a, an amazing performance. If, it would have been nice to knock him out or, or even finish him. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm 38 now. That's three wins. You know, Carol, um, I beat um, Sergei Karatonov, who was supposed to be fighting for the belt if he beat me. Um, Ronnie Marks, you know, another black belt. And then 11-1 uh, uh, and Tyra Fortune, who was on a winning streak as well. And uh, I beat, beat three of them, so I don't know who, who, should, be, who, who should be next, really, to fight either... Um, Ryan Bader or, or um, Valentin Modoski. So I feel like I'm next. But it's not up to me, is it? So wherever Scott Coker is, you know, be having words of him and, and see what he says. Jim Barcelona, Miami Herald. What's up? Hey, first, that bout, it was so interesting. You talked to Danny about it and all. Yeah. As far as the reversals. Yes. He could. You were able to escape at least twice, yeah. and he was not able to do that. 
Then it looked like you were going for the submission. I was talking to another journalist friend yeah. next to me, and he was saying, no, he's not trying to go for the punches. He's really trying to go for the submission. Yeah. So I just wanted to get your take on that part of it and what you were trying to do there. Um, so I, I always go for finishes, whether it be ground and pound or, or the um, submission. And Tyrell was so strong and powerful. Like There was a couple of times he just stood up and shook me off. So um, there was, I sort of had him at a position where I thought, if I go for the, for, the, for the submission, he may reverse. But if I don't go for it and he reverses, so it was sort of, what should I do? So I thought, let's go for the submission. And it, it was about 50% on. It wasn't, it wasn't on. So I ended up sort of bailing on it and then trying for the power half and a bit of ground and pound. Again, he's so strong, he was standing up on his forearm. And I was trying to break him down. I just couldn't do it. Um, so, yeah, I did try. It, it didn't go, obviously, that way. So I just carried on, you know, trying to wear him down a little bit and, and go for the finish with the ground and pound or take him in some later rounds where I could hopefully finish him. And you were able to control that and do that. He wasn't. One yes. time he almost got up, but then you took him right back down, especially in that third round. Yes. Which was I, I, and and, and um, I could see him getting tired. Like, he had a good poker face. He had a good poker face. Um, and, yeah, I could feel there was one time where we were, like, obviously just slugging it out um, in the third. I think it was the start of the third. And I did hit him, and he said he couldn't see. He was talking to me. He said he couldn't see, but he had me by the legs, and I couldn't really do too much. Um, and I think he, he ended up taking me down. And I knew, like, I'm going to reverse you because, again, that's sort of my thing, like... If you do take my die, I do end up trying to get up and trying to reverse and escape. Um, so that, that's what happened, and I think that's what ended me edging that third round. I think we were one apiece, maybe, going into the, into the third. And lastly for me, you mentioned WWE, so any thoughts from you of maybe giving that a try? All the ATT people are doing that I know, now. I know. Like, I like being a fan, but I don't know, man. They take too many bumps, you know, like... Too many bumps for me, like, and I feel like there's more injuries in, in that than there is doing what we do. So, unless they offered me some silly money and I didn't have to take, like, a tombstone or a Brock Lesnar suplex, then maybe, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Danielowski of Fightful here. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. Uh, there was a one point where you got hit below the belt after you hit him below the belt. <laughs> There are some yeah. saying that that might have been intentional or not by Fortune. Do you think that was the case or no? Uh, I'm going to say no, but, you know, like, because, again, at the end of the day, we're, we're in there fighting and we just throw the stuff. Like, I hit, he said I hit him twice. One per, some people say it was once, the second time wasn't. You know, I never intentionally meant to hit him in the nuts either. It's one of them things, like, I hope it wasn't, you know. Um, but it's one of them things, you just, you're in the moment and you're just throwing knees and sometimes they, they do get low, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to say no, it wasn't intentional for him. Fair enough. And, uh, you're ranked sixth right now in the heavyweight rankings. Now the, the, there's an issue with, the uh, interim title and the regular heavyweight title. Yeah. Would you be interested in fighting before you could potentially become the number one contender, say like a Chicago or anybody like that? Um, well, checks off the off that list is my is my good friend. You know, he was one of the first guys. Um, whenever I came to Bellator, he actually looked after me. Like when I first came to America, I stayed with him for like eight weeks. You know, at, at one of his friends' house. You know, so we're, we're good friends. So that's one guy I can't fight. I couldn't do that. Even if he was in your way. Even if he was in my way, you know, like in the day, there's a lot of more people to fight. You know, that doesn't interest me. And the same with Steve Murray. Like, I've known Steve for seven years. My, one of my main training partners, good friend. I'm, like, uncle to his daughter. You know, it's, yeah. Like, when, when, it, when it's that close, there's more fights than, than that. To, and I, I don't think it would ever be the same again. You fight your friend like that. You, you, you know, you're not going to be the same again. So, it don't interest me. Fair enough. Thank you. Congratulations. Appreciate it. All right, Lynn, thank you very much for the time. Congrats thank on the win. Thank you, guys. Thank you.